Hello and welcome to another episode of Tell Great Stories, the podcast that looks back at some of Unbound Theatre's past projects and productions. We've something slightly different for you in this episode, hence why I'm here to introduce things before the podcast begins a proper. What you're about to hear is the audio version of An Evening with Inspector Murder, which was a live stream event we broadcast in April 2021. We're including it here, as it's only fair to feature the Inspector in our behind-the-scenes series, but it seemed a bit daft retelling the same stories we'd covered in the live stream, so we've extracted the audio from the recording, tidied it up a bit, and added it to our podcast feed. One last thing I should mention before we begin is that during the live stream we table-read the first episode of the upcoming second series of Inspector Murder Inspects, our sleuthing sitcom. We've edited that out of this version, as we'll be bringing you the full studio edition of the episode later this year. If you'd like to see the full, unedited live stream, you can look up Unbound Theatre on YouTube and Facebook. But for now, here's the Tell Great Stories edition of An Evening with Inspector Murder. Hello and welcome on behalf of Unbound Theatre to a very, very special Evening with Inspector Murder. We're broadcasting here live from the Limelight Theatre at Queen's Park Arts Centre for a very special show where we're going to be telling you the story of one of our beloved characters from Unbound. My name is Erica Sanderson and I will be your host this evening as well as appearing in some of the scripts. And joining me tonight are... Hello, I'm Alistair Sanderson, no relation, (laughs) Um, and I have the privilege to play the haphazard inspector himself. Hi, I'm Emily Pugh, I'll be playing Law and Order and messing about in a few of the other sketches. I'm Joe Pratt. I play constant surveillance, a very balanced and respectable <laughs> the community, and one or two other weirdos from other sketches. I'm Andy Faber, and I am playing Luke Vercluse. Hello, I'm Stephanie, and I played a variety of characters in Series 1, including Molly. Hi, I'm Gareth Johnson. I assist Dario with the writing of some of this, and I also play a variety of supporting characters, and you'll hear me in some... Brilliant supporting characters throughout the sketches and episodes as well. That's some very sound effects. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and I'm Darren Knight. I'm the co-creator and writer of the series. Right, well, we're going to be diving in with uh, one of the very first sketches in, in which the inspector appeared. This was originally performed as part of the Unbound Sketchbook's debut show, Transcendental Mongoose, in 2016. And the title of this goes by Murder Alley. We hear corner hor- corny horror movie, movie organ music. There seemed uh, nothing altogether peculiar about that night as I walked toward number 666, horrifyingly gruesome murder alley. But even as I knocked upon the door, I couldn't help but feel there was an ugly disturbance waiting for me inside. The door opens. Who are you calling ugly? Oh, it wasn't me. It was the, uh, it was the voiceover. Oh. Can I help? Uh, my name is Inspector Murder, and uh, I'm here to inspect a murder. dun dun da Come again? Uh, I'm here to see the body. Dun, dun, dun. Ignore that. It's just the man next door up out all hours of the night hammering away on his organ. Anyway, mm. what body? Oh, the, the one that's been murdered. There hasn't been a murder. We're having a dinner party. Oh, but I mean, I was told there was a murder. <laughs> this is 666 horrifyingly gruesome murder alley, isn't it? Yes. Well, then I'm here to see the body. What body? Who said there was a body? The script! Oh, I see. Well, there hasn't been a murder. <sighs> Listen, there... <sighs> has been a murder. <laughs> no, there hasn't been. Smooth start. Apologies, everyone. Inspector Murder strikes again. <laughs> yes, there has. No, there hasn't. A gunshot. Now there's been a murder. Right. Well then. I'm here to see the body. Certainly, come on in. We hear more corny horror movie organ music. Oi, Arthur, give it a rest, will you? End of sketch. And uh, in between these, we'll be chatting about some of the -the behind-the-scenes creation behind Inspector Murder. So, Dario, how did the Inspector end up in the first sketchbook show? And uh, what were the beginnings of the character? Um, 
I wish there was a really sort of insightful, fascinating, witty anecdote other than it just popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talked about other characters on these podcasts, we talked about Professor Konomi, there's this whole long creative series of cause and effects that lead to the character. And That's honestly, what I would shut up talking about. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, the idea of a detective who turns up in, to inspect a murder that's not happened yet, just it was just that I, I can't remember the thought process at all. It was just there. Um, and then if you're writing that story, I suppose inevitably there's going to be a line of dialogue along the lines of, my name's Detective so-and-so and I'm here to investigate a murder. And if you've got one ear on wordplay, then inspect a murder, inspecting a murder is, is you know, it's a good bouncy phrase. Um, and that, that that is the boring story. <laughs> um, how he came in the sketch show, I mean, the only, I don't think I've ever told you guys what, I wrote that when I was 17. So he's been around for about, oh wow, more years than I care to remember. Um, <laughs> over a decade. Um, and then... Yeah, he's looking very well, yeah. Um, took nine years to do anything with him. <laughs> and then I think it was Gareth, you and Matt were putting together the first sketch show. And I yeah. think I think Matt asked if I had any material, which I didn't at the time. <laughs> so I dug that one out of the sort of the hard drive and then and away it went. Who knew where it would lead? Oh, nice. mm. That's a bit <laughs> Well, the following year after 2016, the character returned for the sketchbook second show, which was Farmers vs. Pirates. And this time became a recurring character in several sketches through the sketchbook. And we're going to be performing all three of them, starting with The Witness, which was written by Gareth. <clears throat> right then, uh, let's get down to business. My name is Inspector Murder, and I'm here to inspect a murder. Dun dun dun! Yes, I oh, will be aided in this task by my assistant, Luke the Clues. Evening. Uh, Luke, that's a very French sounding name you have there. Yes, it is, sir. Indeed it is. Yes, it is. And and, and, and yet, uh, you do not seem to have a hilariously comedy French accent. No, sir. No, I do not. My parents were French, and I was named by them. But they both tragically died in a non-specific accident when I was sent to live with my estranged uncle in Wales. Uh, and uh, yet you do not seem to have a hilariously comedy Welsh accent. <laughs> that is quite correct, sir. As my estranged uncle tragically died at the shock of having a small child turn up out of the blue, asking to live with them. And so I was taken in by my adoptive parents, the Giovanni family. Right, yes. And, and what uh, accent did they speak with it, exactly? That's not important. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think that your lack of a comedy French accent has less to do with a tragic and convoluted backstory and... Uh, more to do with the fact that you cannot do a hilariously comedy French accent. <coughs> I couldn't possibly comment. Yes, and, and that although we have many people in the cast uh, capable of doing a very good French accent, you're such a prima donna that you insisted on playing the part of Luke anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <clears throat> well, um, anyway, we should uh, get on with solving the murder. Right, well... The inspector stops him and waits... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Do carry on, Luke. <laughs> right. Well, I was just saying, we should probably interview Miss Taken. Who's She's a Miss... witness. Who's Miss Taken? Well, not me, I hope. <laughs> She's definitely a witness. She saw the, um... Murder. <laughs> yes. She saw the murder? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, she saw the murder. Come on, where's my sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> Luke makes an obscene hand gesture at the sound desk. I understand you wanted to talk to me, Inspector? Uh, that's correct, Miss. I suppose it's about... The murder. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> oh, come on! Well, as it happens, I overheard Victor Timothy. Poor victim. Right. I overheard him having a rather strange conversation shortly before he died. Oh, uh, what did he say? He said. There's a gunshot. Susan falls, but the inspector does not notice. Ah! Uh, I think I've been murdered! Oh, well, I mean, I know that's what he probably said after being murdered, yeah. Th but what did he say before being murdered? I've been shot! No, no, the victim was stabbed, not shot. Help me! Uh, so, so wait, uh, he said... Help me! Uh, was it before or after he was stabbed? I'm... Dying. Oh, so he was dying, eh? <laughs> well, maybe it was a mercy killing. I feel like we're missing something here, sir. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Uh, Susan? He finally sees her on the floor. 
Susan! She's been killed! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so sorry, yeah, yeah. She's been murdered! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Will Inspector Murder catch the killer before he kills another witness? Will Luke for Clues eventually flip and punch the sound technician? Will these characters turn up again at another point in the show? Find out the answer to some, all, or none of these questions in the next mildly diverting adventure of Inspector Murder. <laughs> so, Gareth and Dario. Whose fault was it? I mean, sorry, whose <laughs> idea was it for the inspector to return for the second sketchbook, Farmers vs. Pirates? And uh, why make him a recurring character in the show itself? I don't. I seem to remember being asked if it was okay for him to come back. Well, I think. I, I think when we were sort of, yeah, reviewing the first show and sort of starting to put the second one together, there was a, a big discussion about sort of whether it wants to be themed or whether we want to build a, yes, a, a linking plot. thing to it. And I know there, wa- there was a point where um, we were going to try and have Inspector Murder pervade throughout the entirety of the sketch show. So every <laughs> sketch was going to have a small cameo from Inspector Murder at one point. And then by the end, it all sort of came to this apex where... While the sketch show was going on, Inspector Murder was inspecting a murder at the same time. Um, but then we found that we had yeah, so many good sketches that you couldn't link together that we went with the, the other format. But I think it was sort of starting with that idea. And I think we put a call out to the writers actually saying, yes. can you come up with anything to use Inspector Murder? And we came back with these yeah, three brilliant sketches for the, for the second show. Um, but yeah, the idea of the actual linking, overarching plot never materialised. We tried it a few times with sketch shows. There was going to be one, because there's a, there's a recurring character in the sketchbook called Eric, uh, who, yeah. as a running <laughs> gag, Eric. gets killed off in the opening monologue. Somehow off stage, he's died before the show began. And we sort of said it'd be quite funny to do a show that where you see him finally, and then he <laughs> drops dead, and the entire rest of the show is the, the team trying to hide the body. <laughs> and so you'd be in the middle of a sketch and then John North would come on with a wheelbarrow with someone in it just sort of oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we've talked about it a lot and then we've just never gotten around to actually writing it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah you're right it was one of those it was going to be a whole murder mystery that then got solved at the end yeah. mm. uh, Gareth you said that you, you put a call out to other writers to produce sketches for you and uh, our next sketch is uh, called it's called also from Farmers vs Pirates it's called Intrusive Narrator, and this was written by Brian Murray. So we have Inspector Murder and Luke for Clues frozen mid-pose on stage. This week's thrilling episode of Inspector Murder is called The Spare Room of Doom. The Inspector and Luke unfreeze. Uh, right, now Luke, we have... In which they are called <laughs> to inspect a grisly murder at Snotbury Manor. Annoyed, the inspector pauses, waits, then opens his mouth to speak, but... Will they solve the mystery of... The Spare Room of Doom? (laughs) Good. (laughs) Right, now... Look, we've been... Will they survive their grueling ordeal? How will they face their toughest challenge yet? Will things ever be the same? Luke, after they have shared their first kiss. The inspector and Luke look shocked until Luke's expression melts into sly expectation. The inspector double takes. Wait! Wait! All this will be revealed in The Spare (laughs) Room of Doom. The inspector and Luke are about to give up. Surely it can't be Lord Snobbery. His PTSD means he could never fire a gun. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, 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 spoilers! And the maid's anorexia means that she can hardly lift a heavy firearm, making a, such a shot at that distance nigh on impossible! The inspector frantically signals timeout. None of this is for a humble narrator to reveal. The only way you can find out the answer to the questions around tonight's mystery is by watching... The Spare Room of Doom. <coughs> right. Now, Luke. Yeah. We've been invited to Snot. Oh, right. It was the butler. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are going to move on now to uh, the epic 
sketch, which is known as The Reveal, which features pretty much everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest sketch ever. So, we are the sitting room of a country house. Inspector Murder and Luke Recluse are surrounded by suspects. Well then, uh, here we are, yes. Now, the suspects are gathered, and at last we shall unmask the murderer of poor Victor Timothy. Poor victim. He is quite, he is quite. <laughs> I'm afraid the need for all this theatricality is lost on me, Inspector. Yes, I mean, I know you've a rotten coat of debang to rights, but why must we all be summoned here? Yes, you could just come out with it. It is necessary, uh, Lady Da 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 you're better than that. Oh, no, it, no, sorry. It uh, shall be dramatic, shocking. He leans towards Miss Leading's ear. And a little bit sexy. It's really not. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Yeah, and, and, um, and, 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 and so we have our suspects. He consults his notebook. Right. Uh, yeah, you, Miss Leading... Uh, Claim to have been in your bed when Victor Timothy was killed. Yeah. But Captain Obvious over there says he uh, came across you in the orangery. I wonder where that stain came from all of a sudden. Um, uh, 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 and you, um, uh, Sheffield, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, were in the kitchen, I believe? That I was, and what of it? Um, but no one can corroborate your story. Uh, yes, most peculiar, eh? <laughs> Who next, uh, the clues? Farther away. Sorry. He takes a step back. Who next, the clues? No, farther away. The vicar. I was in my room saying my prayers at my bedside. I can vouch for that, Inspector. I was winding the gramophone in my room at the time. I distinctly heard the words, Oh God, coming from farther away's room across the hall. Oh, thank you, uh, Lady Dida. Thank you. Oh, that leaves us with the good doctor. Oh, yes, yes. Dr. Ed Evidence. He checks his notebook. Uh, now, you were uh, in the grounds? Uh, taking a late night walk. We found the doctor's footprints outside, sir. He's in the clear. Y yeah, but how do we know Dr. Evidence didn't doctor the evidence here to mislead us? Just like misleading. <laughs> and uh, you look for clues, for clues, but yeah, you play the role of Captain Obvious until you're further away from the truth than Sheffield is to Lake Titicaca. <laughs> hey, Lady Dada? I don't follow. Oh, well, it, it, it matters not. <clears throat> uh, Lady, um, you, you mentioned your gramophone. Yes. Uh, do you all have gramophones in your uh, quarters? Yes. yes. No wonder they're all up so uptight. Yeah. Of course. Would anyone like a mint? He takes a packet from his pocket but drops one on the floor. Oh, where's that from? He gets on his hands and knees <laughs> <laughs> and searches the floor. <laughs> what are you getting at, Inspector? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, uh, the gramophone is the mean. To murder? Farther away, kneels before the sofa, trying to reach underneath. To mask a murder? You heard noises coming from farther away's room, lady. I put it to you, those noises were a recording played on a gramophone to make it appear as though the culprit was in their room. We hear a whoosh and the lights go off and then on again. How peculiar. Anyway... The gramophone recording made it appear the culprit was in their room when really they were shooting Victor Timothy. You don't mean... Yes, the murderer is farther away. I thought it was one of this lot. Are we in the wrong house? Not further, farther. He points at farther away. He did it. <gasps> farther away remains crouched by the sofa. Get up, Father. It's over. <laughs> stand, stand up, Father. Father. Father away keels over. 
He's dead. Good God. I need a brandy. He pours <laughs> himself a drink. Ow. A blow dart, sir. So it wasn't him then? Um, no. No, 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 of course. <clears throat> that was uh, what I was supposed to think, <laughs> you see. Yes. I, I was just about to say that after carefully studying the layout of the East Wing, the solution is obvious. Yeah, the room belonging to Father Away was much uh, farther away from the others. There's no way his prayers could have been heard by anyone else. It was a lie. Therefore, it becomes clear that the murderer is you, Lady Dida. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Thank you. The lights go out. I see. Who turned up the lights? We hear another whoosh and a thud. I'll get them. The lights come back on. Lady Dada Dum is on the floor, smothered in rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lady Dada Dum. Yeah. Dada uh, Dum. Lady Dada Dum's dead. Uh, <gasps> oh, running low on suspects. Mm. Uh, the doctor had evidence. The doctor is sipping his drink. He gulps and begins to splutter. He's choking. <coughs> Man, save Inspector Murder tries to minister the Heimlich manoeuvre. There's a gunshot at the exact moment the doctor coughs and the doctor slumps from the inspector's grasp. He's dead! I, I, I mean, I barely touched him. I mean, it seems the esteemed Dr Heimlich underestimated the power of his potent, uh, patented manoeuvre. Yeah. Wait. Oh, of course. The, the murderer is... It's not Dr Heimlich. He's been shot. Has he? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in the paper. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Not a, not a light gone out in the world. Oh, look, can people please just stop dying for Christ's sake? He thumps the table at the same time there's a whoosh and Captain Obvious collapses. Captain? Luke inspects the body. Dead. I, I know he had a heart condition, but I mean, I, it was only a light thumb. Another poison dart. Oh, okay, I may be in over my head here. <laughs> <laughs> Sheffield, would you please call Scotland Yard and ask for backup? Of course, sir. She exits through the curtains. There's a sound of a wet thump. No, 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 wait, of course. Yeah, poison. It was the cook. Sheffield did it. He pulls back the curtains and Sheffield drops into the room dead, a dagger in her back. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> then there's only one suspect left. What? No, no, you've got it wrong. No, 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 it, it can't be. We we were meant to end up together. What? <laughs> <laughs> Two beautiful singletons, little past their prime. What? <laughs> <laughs> thrown, thrown, thrown together in a, in, a, in a bloody night of cold murder. Yeah. Or a cold uh, night of bloody murder. I, I forget. It. Look, I didn't do it, but I'll confess to anything you like if you just keep him away from me. I was sure, sure it was one of the others. I mean, there must be an answer. Um, but perhaps Lady da 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 dum da da dum. Ah, of course, sir. Inspector Murder beckons Luke and misleading aside. I've got it. I mean, I re really got it this time. <laughs> oh, this devil is a clever fiend. Who? It was. The sound man. What? Yeah, well, I mean, only he had the, the, the means to do it. Every murder occurred amidst a comedic sound effect to mask the gunshots, stabbings, blow darts and rope-based smotherings. The timing had to be razor sharp. But it's their only answer. During his speech, the barrel of a rifle slowly appears over the side of the sound desk gantry. There he is! Luke runs off. D d misleading! The lights go off, there's a gunshot and they come back up again. Inspector Murder has been shot. He lays in misleading's arms. You saved my life, Inspector. Miss Leading, I always knew I'd end up in your arms. Oh, it was fate. Try not to speak. It's save my last breath, you, you mean? No, you're just making me nauseous. Enter Luke, escorting a man in theatre blacks. Got him, sir. Excellent work for clues. Uh, you, you'll make a fine inspector now I'm out of action. Inspector, you, you mean it, sir? You, you, you're not... You're not misleading. No, no, she's misleading. I'm Inspector Murder. I'll take it back for clues. You're fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's getting cold. 
So, so long, my darling. Look, look after her, the Clint and, and the others. Brave Captain Obvious, that boffin, Doctor in Evidence, and Sheffield, and Lady. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Where did that come from? We've got the sound man here. They look at each other. Are you sure he's the sound man? He was stood next to the sound desk. I was doing the tea. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. The lights go off and there's four gunshots. <laughs> Warrow could not have been it better. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last sketch of the character before the inspector got his own spin-off sitcom. Now, the original recordings of that are quite different to the series that went out last year, if I'm going to happen listening to this. Um, so how did the sitcom version of the character come about, and how is it different from the recordings? The writers, Mr Gareth and Mr Gary Owen. I think it was that sketch that kind of gave us the idea. Mm. Um, I'd slightly shudder reading that on back now, because the jokes are, I think, are very forced. But there was, <laughs> having written it and seen it performed, there was a clear... A clear notion that those two characters could work really well in a long form format. I mean, that very nearly is a long form format. It's longer than a sketch has a right to be. Um, and we'd always had an idea of doing more audio. It was very early days of unbounding audio, and it seemed that they were, again, if an idea strikes you, you listen to it and go with it. And we thought, actually, the core of the character is in that sketch, which is that he's trying to be, in that case, uh, Poirot. It's more an Agatha Christie style. But he's he's not doing it very well, and ev- most sitcoms, almost every sitcom character has a a basic uh, conflict, and that there's something they want to be. They're trying to be something, but they're continually failing. And every episode is about them aspiring and failing, and that's the perfect launch pad for a character to go into into a series. So it was from that we extrapolated. We turned it into Sherlock Holmes rather than Agatha Christie, mainly because Sherlock Holmes didn't want to pay anyone. Uh, <laughs> that's always a bonus, and uh, it seemed. I mean, he has to. He's in every different time frame, in every different sketch. We never agreed any sort of a, an agreed continuity. So we gave him his own continuity that he's trying to be like Sherlock Holmes. And if you had another character who's at the same time that Sherlock lived in London, who was constantly getting all the cases that Holmes can't be bothered with and doesn't want to deal with, and is having to do them anyway for the sake of his pride, that's the good premise. So we developed it from there, really. And um, I suppose in a way, it does. It parallels Holmes. We made. We made Luke more of a kind of, actually, he's more Q from James Bond, isn't he? It's the idea yeah. that if you had an inventor, you've got a fantastic premise. Every week there's a different invention, which is either something useful for the plot, which is handy, or it's just a funny scene. So we then gave him a, a Dr. Watson, who became Law and Order. And that was mainly because we, I didn't want to do a series that had three male characters, I believe. We wanted to make it a bit more interesting than that. So Laura came along as the kind of Dr. Watson, because you need someone to... To hold order in this sense, <laughs> <laughs> and then I suppose extrapolating parallels with Holmes. Holmes has his housekeeper, is Miss Hudson, who is a very unobtrusive figure in the in the Holmes story. So <laughs> you, you flip that on the head, and you give a character who steamrollers through the plot like a, a freight train. Um, so just <laughs> <laughs> and so that became Constance. Is you know, well, if if he's instead of having a very efficient, quiet housekeeper, he has someone who is <laughs> constantly you know, nearly killing him okay? <laughs> and is just making his life difficult for the hell of it. And that's where we got the, the basic premise from, really. And we went from there. We, did, we used to do two episodes at a time. We did three recordings over about six months, I think. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's how it came about. But um, they were live recordings. We used to do them in front of an audience back when such a thing was possible. Um, and we used to stand basically in a line on stage all with lecterns with the script on the audience would be there and we'd read them out Stefan who's hiding over there um would play in the sound effects and we recorded them as live recordings so it's quite it's I mean they're great fun to listen back to the the audio quality we'll talk about later is a bit odd because they're recorded live and it was the first time we'd done it but they're really fun to listen to because the audience had a great time and so did we um so Alistair Mm. The Inspector. <laughs> Explain yourself. You have played The Inspector since the very first sketchbook show, and you've come back to do the sitcom now. So, what were your thoughts when you first heard about the series, and what is the appeal of playing The Inspector? <laughs> I, I mean, look, it was uh, so unexpected and, and, and such a lovely um, creation to happen, this whole sort of spin off series. and. Um, 
I kind of remember when I very first did the very first sketch and we've been doing various sketches and, and different characters and, and, they're, and they're, in this particular sketch I've been given the role of a detective turning up at a door and I remember when I kind of read it and these it you know you can take it in different kind of ways and perhaps on paper it kind of lent itself to being very much more of a film noir trilby hat yeah, cigarette smoking yeah. sort of talking to the camera sort of detective but there was just something about it that I kind of lent a little bit more I thought you know just perhaps a little this more bumbling Victorian Sherlock Holmes-esque type detective just kind of fitted that moment and uh so one sort of tried it that way and, and, and in, a, in a nice lovely way you know Gareth and everybody and Dario you know, producing it all they, they were happy with that and so I guess that's kind of how that style came through so to then learn that you know it would then evolve into a whole sort of series was I mean basically hats off to our writing team because we, we, we have such a great talent there that they were able to cre- create these adventures and and to, and to have a whole agency where we're all at this part of this little team working together and going on these haphazard <laughs> adventures was was actually just such a lovely rich experience and um, to be at the center of that as the inspector after having touched on it a while back was just such a lovely sort of fruition so yeah it kind of feels that you carried the kernel of that very, very first performance from the sketch show right the way, right yeah. the way through. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, I think every time you do a character, there's always little bits from yourself that you draw upon it. Um, and that's <laughs> 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 and, and also probably slightly that, bad yeah. in character flaws, personal flaws. But no, so yes, um, that kind of bumbling thing, it's sort of... Yeah, it's always a personal thing. It's very. I think it was endearing. (laughs) (laughs) Many lawsuits later. Yes. Now, moving on to a couple of other members of the cast: Joe and Emily. There. Um, you also appeared in the original sketches and then have become regular cast members. So, tell us about your. We've heard a little bit about uh, Law and Order and Constance. Surveillance. Um, so tell us a bit about your characters and what was your reaction to reading the script for the first time? It was really exciting. Like when we were doing the sketches and I looked, this was my first foray into comedy or anything like that, apart from my one panto. And we did this, um, we did the very long one here and I was like, oh, this is fun. This is chaos. There is puns. <laughs> oh, someone has collected all my favourite things. <laughs> 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 exciting um, even if it took us forever to learn how to smother me in rope but um <laughs> when i got laura i was like oh my god this is like a real honor um because she's such an incredible character she's so strong and she's wonderful and to know that something that i thought was really cool and i thought was really great and wonderful writing wonderful characters and something i was really passionate about was going further and I could do it more. I didn't have to leave it behind. This wasn't something that we did it and then it went. It was something that was continuing and there's that real excitement because I'm not saying I ever, you know, I never perform in anything I don't like or I don't like anything I perform, but there's just something about Inspector Murder that just is. I just fun. feel so attached to it. Yeah. Probably because it has lots of the things I like personally anyway, and it's great. What, like filthy jokes? <laughs> <laughs> they take me four years to get. <laughs> I mean, there's something really, really magic when you find a character that you either feel personally an affinity with, and then you get to perform it, and then you get to perform it again, and it grows, and you kind of think, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, Laura's everything I want to be. She's like an absolute badass. She's consistently <laughs> clever, and she just is so solid. You're just like, oh. I want to be Laura. And I get to be Laura. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I aspire to be constant. <laughs> I think everyone aspires constant. to be constant a little. Yeah. Yeah. Constance has got a lot of freedom, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Freedom of expression. Likes. When yeah. I first saw it, I just thought, whoa, this is a character that you could really let loose on because you don't, you, there's no need to hold back. You, know? <laughs> you just really kind of take it to the top level and then up a notch. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really fun to play. And um, it, she does. I think each episode, because because part of what she does is is to be shocking and to you know to get laughs by just being absolutely 
horrifically behaved, it has to get a little bit more shocking. Than the other. So you know, it kind of builds. So each script, I just open it. And go, oh, what's she going to do now? It is the thing that you want to look for when you first open the script. Is she doing? What the fuck has Constant done this time? <laughs> you get to the point where you, where you read it and you go, Oh my god, how the hell can they top that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. and some very excellent swear mm. instructions in there are, that are very funny. Turns of phrase, you know, oh. this is lovely, lovely writing. It's, it's really good fun. I mean, Constance has got some fantastic lines, but even oh, also the, the puns of the names as well. Yeah. That's, that's one of the first things I always think about. That's why she's Welsh because we came, we came up with the names <laughs> first. We had a whole list. Some of them are in those sketches. Ali Bai is another one. I think comes up in a minute. Um, and we came with Constance of Valence. We thought she sounds sounds really Welsh. We'll make her Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Because you were, you're trying to work out, because obviously they're all ludicrous names, it's sort of in a vague attempt at making it have a logical sense. Maybe she's Welsh. Yeah, <laughs> Explains her name. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is um, one for sort of the original cast members Alistair, Emily, Joe, Gareth, and Dario. So, from those original recordings back here when you all stood in the line and you had a bunch of what were your memories, if you remember that far back? What were they? What were they like? It was a lifetime ago now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so long exactly. since we did it. I think for me, it was again a new format. I was doing everything very quickly. I'd mm. gone from panto, I'd done my first comedy, and then we were doing podcast recordings, and I'm like, ah. Oh. But every time you went out there, you were there with your best friends. You were there with an audience that you know loves you. And you were also, you know what you're doing is so good, you know they're going to laugh. And there's always that great feeling where they laugh and you can be a bit more relaxed and you can laugh with them. And there's such a joy to be like, get that feedback. You can see them because you're all in a line at the front. There is no avoiding the fact they're laughing mm. at you or with you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, because it, it'd be even things like times where you'd mess up. Um, I accidentally called the inspector a prat instead of a prig. <laughs> and in my head, I was going, because I'd done it in rehearsal yeah. and I was going, don't say prat, don't say prat, prat. Oh. No, it wasn't you. You called him a prick. It was a, a prick. Yeah. It was the slightly <laughs> more. Yeah. Funny enough, I was going to t- tell that story, Sorry. but no, it's great. No, it's but good. But you have to go back and redo the line because it's a recording. So if you make a mistake, you have to go back. And I was like, prick. And then the audience is clocked. Yeah. So I basically just called Alice Girl. Prick. Live, unadulted. But it, but it went down a treat, and it, it's, it's even even the moments where it go wrong, as you yeah. say. It, it's you know, that was an instance where being stood in a line sort of lent its own comedy because we sort of stood there and when you said that everyone just sort of turned <laughs> <laughs> and the audience had no idea why until yeah. you did it a few people nodded <laughs> yeah. but it was also uh, during those that one of the moments you realise that some lines you think are the best and some you think are funny and there are some you're like this is quite funny and then the audience just rolled with it and there was yeah. one of my lines where I was like oh you just slipped something into my compartment <laughs> which is quite funny and, you know, there's a little chuckle, but then there's someone in the audience who just started laughing. But it was like a low laugh, and then slowly the audience joined in. And it went on for a good minute, maybe two minutes. Well, it was a minute and a half, I think, and then we cut it in yeah. the edit because it just made no sense. <laughs> but the reason, it, the other reason it kept going, there was, I think it was Eddie, mm. one of our technicians, who was in there, who was finding it very amusing and good to have someone in the audience who thinks that. But then we all started going as well. And yeah. I think, it, yeah. again, it kind of went down the line. Led by yeah. Matt Doherty. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't look at him. That's, you just yeah. had to do that. There are um, photos where you can see people directly not looking at him because you know you're... There's one where I'm like looking completely away because I'm like, I will, I will completely <laughs> corpse. I'll go because he's just chuckling in the background. I mean, that presented one of the most bizarre editing <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. It was the weirdest laugh we've ever got. It just, it wasn't very big. But yeah. it went on for ages. So it was quite a varied laugh. It went on its own journey, sort of going up in volume and intensity and then dipping down and going sort of all over the place. So you couldn't even just chop the middle out. Because if you did, you'd end up with a really obvious you know, intersection. So you had to kind of go, right, where does this laugh sound most like the end of this <laughs> end? Like, what can I chop Before out? it starts up again. Yeah. 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 It was lovely, though. It was a great moment. Yeah. They were, they were good fun. And I, I must admit, actually, on um, really everything, agree with everything everyone's saying, but it's the fact that it was that kind of new style of genre for, for a lot of us, that kind of BBC radio play type mm, record, all that stuff. in front of a live audience. I, that was a real pleasure to to actually, in a whole professional capacity, be doing this new, different style of technique that you, you 
you'd never get a chance to do anyway, you know, or anywhere else. And so very lucky from that point of view. And as, as kind of Dario mentioned, um, at that particular time, it was just a wonderful thing. We've been doing all the sketches with Unbound and that's, that's fabulous. But to have a, a recurring character and storyline where we're all getting diving back in together was, is, is fabulous. And we sadly lost uh, our, our good friend, Matthew, who, was, who played Luke Vaucluse originally. And I guess in the early days, it was slightly a bit more sort of a bumbling butler sort of uh, bondsman type thing. And for us all to have shared those moments together and those memories was actually very special considering we'd, we, we lost him. Um, and to have and, it recorded as well. Yeah. And to have it recorded. And then Andy has come in as, as Luke and, and taken it on in a brilliant way and with all the kind of theatrical love yeah. things going <laughs> on. Um, so, hat, so hats off to both of them. Um, they played it beautifully and, and, and matched it up. But to have that special kind of memory type thing at that particular time was was so important. So mm. I remember I did a little presentation for everybody, a little gift for, for the thing. We um, At the end of the whole series, we had a photo of all of us gathered. Yeah. It's almost like one of those mm. black and white photos you could get from, from history. Uh, where not that stood in the <laughs> and, not been doing it that long. <laughs> no, we weren't standing there that long posing, but but it was like we're all gathered and a photo's been taken, and yeah, it, it's become a bit of a footnote in, in one of my history memories. It's you know? one you know you'll look back on. Yeah. Like I know, like if if I get to be old, it'd be lovely. I know that that's going to be one I'm going to look back and go, oh, that was great. Was that a great time? They're going to go, yes, Emily, dear. And I'm like, look what I did. Look what I was in. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get all the, the nursing and stuff to listen to it. Listen yeah. to it. <laughs> it's on Maybe SoundCloud. Yeah, more and more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's what you were saying about um, being on um, being on the stage where, where you've got this. I, I mean, I, I love doing like, live readings yeah. like that mm. where, where you've got the script. And when you are in a line, and you can share the joy with your other actors, I think, you know, I've... I've, mm. I've yeah, the, the stuff that I've done when, when you're standing there. And you know either the funny bit's coming or something. You can kind of glance over. And you're in you're in character performing the script. And you're also the actor and you as well. And you are genuinely enjoying other people's performances. And I, I love it when you're standing there. And if you, you haven't got anything to say for a while and you're just watching two other actors do their craft. And yeah. it's, it's, it's such a joy. And I think, I think when you're able to do that in front of a live audience as well, a live audience will pick up on that and they will genuinely enjoy everyone's performance and you creating yeah. it as well. It's, ma it's magic. I, I think it. if, yeah. if it's magic a podcast work. recording, but then they sort of feel that they're kind of, the audience is sort of part of the cast yeah. because mm. their reactions are recorded and it's all, you know, it's all part of the thing and we're, we're interacting and it, what they do affects what we do and, you know, it's all sort of, it's, it's great. Yeah, Good it, point, yeah. Constance. Yeah, I like didn't believe she had intelligence there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, during the middle of all of these original recordings, this was when the inspector returned for his last live performance for the third Unbound sketch show, which was Deploy the Emergency Sketchbook. And from that, our final sketch is uh, one called Annotations. There you go. Inspector Meda and Luke Recluse enter with a witness. They sit at a table. Right, <clears throat> for the uh, benefit of the tape, uh, my name is Inspector Murder and I'm inspecting the murder of Mr. Homer Side. Yeah, my able assistant, Luke Ecluse, and I are now interrogating Miss Alibi over inconsistencies in her witness state. Uh, sir, sir, I forgot the tape. <laughs> what? Uh, did, why didn't you tell me before I started speaking? You've got such a lovely speaking voice, sir. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> so, Miss By, yeah. I wish to ask you to explain in more detail where you were on the night Mr. Side was murdered. In particular, I'd like to know more about your movements after 10pm when you say you were... A YouTube-style annotation written on a cue card is poked through the side curtains. It reads, for more Inspector Murder sketches, click here. Uh, what's that? Sally pokes her head through to the curtains. It's only an annotation. Ignore that. Annotation? Yes, you should 
The Limelight Theatre uses them to let the audience know about other content which might be of interest to them. Helps retain the audience, advertise content provider. Irritate the fuck out of everyone. Get your under caution, put down. Just carry on regardless. Another annotation is carried on. It reads, check out our latest podcast at www.queensparkarts.com. More and more annotations are carried on, filling the stage. Oh, don't worry, sir. I'll deal with it. Luke runs around clicking the close button on each board. <clears throat> right. Very well. Mm. Now, Miss Bai, after 10pm, you say you were on your way to the Persophony Club when you were accosted by a man wearing a trilby hat and a long, dark coat. Harry enters with an annotation reading, Design your own webpage with Sight Spinner, holding it in front of the inspector's face. Would you get that out of the way? I'm, I'm trying to interrogate a suspect. Look, sir, we could create a website to advertise our detective agency. Quiet for clues. Oi! That is not one of the approved annotations. Well, I don't care. I'm here to get the word out about a fantastic new website design service called Site Spinner. And come hell or high water, I am going to tell everyone about the easy to use design. Did you do the arrest that man for obstruction? Yes, sir. Luke leads Harry away. It has an expertly designed user interface that lets you choose from over 250 templates, each of them customizable by the. Sorry about that. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not happy with all these pop up thingies. Not pop ups? Annotations. Completely different. I don't know. Can't I just carry out my investigation unhindered? Stage hands begin changing the scenery. What's that? That's the stuff of the next sketch. Did it, but I'm not done! Sorry. That's the new autoplay function prevents dead air between sketches, which could lead to audience losing interest. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> And there, we left the inspector way, way back in 2018. But he was eventually brought back in a slightly new form for 2020. So, Dario, tell us a little bit about that <laughs> and uh, how you essentially sort of rebooted the franchise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are going to take over the We're all listening. Yes, and it is a reboot. Um, so we've done, we did six of these episodes live as a, a podcast with an audience. And we... We decided that was it. It has a it's a story. If you go back and listen to them, I won't, I won't spoil it. Um, it has a very definite beginning, middle, and end. It, there's uh, a storyline that unfolds and ends at the end of the episode. So we thought that's good. We've finished. We'll go. Hooray! It's always good to you know you've finished a project and you've and ended it well. And then it was like you were saying um, earlier. There's something about Inspector Murder. It doesn't really leave you alone. And then about <laughs> now, a year and a half later, we got to the end of 2019. I started thinking about all the characters again, and all I thought there's there's situations they could be in, there's I you know um, problems they'd have to come up against. There's horrific things Constance could be doing that we haven't <laughs> we haven't done yet. So we <laughs> there was this idea maybe go back to it, maybe have another go, and it was and it was slightly convoluted because because it ends in a I'm not going to give away the ending it ends in a very particular way I never wanted to undo that because it's a, it's the perfect way to say goodbye to those characters so if we were going to do more it had to be somewhere sort of halfway <laughs> through the series but it's a very odd thing to expect an audience two three years later to say we need you to go back and listen to the half this thing we did three years ago <laughs> then listen to this new thing and then go back and find out how it ends so it made sense on, on multiple levels to just start again and reboot it and um another of the reasons was that we it was great doing it in front of an audience and we really enjoyed it but our audio content had really moved on since then particularly in, then covid happened and we did things like the professor and the sonnets and the audio quality of the live recordings is is fine they're, they're listenable but they're not studio quality and so we thought well if we want to go back let's do it so it sounds like the rest of our audio output and again, it would be quite weird if you listen to three slightly dodgy recordings, then six really good ones. <laughs> um, so again, um, we so change it. And the other thing is, as uh, Alice said, we didn't have Matt anymore. Um, we tried to get him back. He wouldn't. We, his agent wouldn't let him come back. <laughs> <laughs> it demanded too much money, so we got rid of him. Um, and it, again, it would be very weird to listen to half a series with one person playing a character and then find someone else and then go back to the original. So we decided, we'll just start from scratch. And also, I think we went back to those scripts and realised... When you when you start, you don't really work out what the series is till you've written a few of them. And actually, those early episodes of the live recordings are quite different. They don't, the first episode doesn't really fit. Actually, it's, it presupposes you know all the characters. It it sort of starts in the middle of things. And actually, what you want episode one to do, especially if you're bringing it back, is to introduce the character. So that's where we in the new version, the shiny new studio version, which is <laughs> series one of the version two point um, 
you get a sort of reprise of that first sketch of the inspector turning up to Inspector Miller, but now that becomes a whole plot line through the episode. And also, rather than Laura being there to begin with, she's then, it's her first day, which is perfect because you get to meet all the characters through her. So it was a chance to kind of go back and it's almost like doing a second draft or something um, from the writing side of things. And um, again, it was just sort of, it could be a lot of fun to go back and there was a lot of ideas and if you've got ideas, do them. Um, Covid then happened, which put things on the back burner. Um, but then it worked out perfectly because we needed audio projects when we came back. We had a recording studio. We couldn't be in front of an audience, so let's do, let's go back to inspect some murder. And it was actually after the first lockdown, or however, first two lockdowns. I can't remember. It was a really nice thing to go back to. It's yeah. a nice. It was a very happy memory doing inspect some murder. So it was great to come back and and to have Andy coming on board as well. Um, which was, I think, the biggest thing. And and honestly, we we wouldn't have done it if we couldn't have found someone who we felt would be respectful of what Matt had done, but also not try and copy what Matt had done and would fit in really well. And that was the hardest thing, I think. I know Alistair and Joe and Emily was the thing we were all a little bit unsure of. And the way we reasoned it out was years ago when we did um, Alice in Wonderland, Matt played the caterpillar, or the matterpillar, he became. (laughs) And there was one show he couldn't do. He he couldn't get out of work, so we had to get him an understudy. And um, Steve Davies said he'd come in and do one show only. And Steve is an amazing actor with a a prolific career in acting and really highly respected. And Matt spent the entire run going around going, see, when I get an understudy, I get the best. He was so (laughs) chuffed that it was Steve that he didn't mind not being there for a day. And I thought if I could find someone who he'd feel the same way about doing more, and taking the character on, he that's so I I felt that's fine. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be pissed off. <laughs> and so I mean, it must it, it's guesswork because um, Andy never met Matt sadly. But mm. I knowing Matt as I did and for the years I did, I'm, I am without a shadow of a doubt he would have loved Andy. Mm. He would yeah. have really respected yeah, yeah, yeah. him. He would yeah. have yeah. had a ball in his company. So it was kind of, yeah. it was really it was only going to be Andy. It was, <laughs> it was no, if, if Andy said no, I think we probably wouldn't have done it. Um, and so we thought, well, we've got Andy, and Andy took it on brilliantly, and we changed the character a bit, and um, and away we went. So that's so yeah, it's it's version two point So you don't have to listen to the live ones if you don't want them to. You can just start with series one. But they're kind of fun, almost like a little curio. They're a fun little quirky thing we did. It's like a pilot. It is. It is. It's yeah. the first draft. Yeah, yeah. It's what we tried to, do. and then we've kind of gone back to it and expanded it and made them bigger, and there are whole new episodes as well. So. Yeah, that's that's how we came back. This just shows you how clever the writing team is. <laughs> They're not going to write you that monologue. No, <laughs> You've already got your own scene. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible how you tied it all in. It's, um, mm. Yeah, brilliant. But as um, Dario just introduced our, one of our new cast members, Andy, as mm. Luke, so what was it like for you coming into this and oh. taking on board the, the character and... Uh, yeah. Making making Luke yours yeah. and what were your thoughts uh, well, about the script and everything. Say, first of all, a massive, massive honour for a star. I'm incredibly flattered to be asked. And also really very quite daunting. So I know Matt was a very um, clever, talented chap and a very prolific sort of writer and thinker of things himself, wasn't he? He was a great user of the um, uh, sketch show. So I was really quite um, what I absolutely most of all wanted to do was not take it and you know, I, I, it very much had to be very much something that he would approve of. You know, it's actually not mine. It's his, and he. So I've t- very much tried to sort of, you know, make it in his spirit and his style, which is tricky. It's a true. I didn't meet him, but just taking the the character as as it's been written, which I do love. It's such a clever. Um, it's a bit of a. It was a bit of a me kind of character. <laughs> <laughs> you do anything slightly vaguely, and you know, round about that. That's kind of how I operate. So, um, but the thing I remember. My favourite ever part of that I heard a couple of the um, old episodes, the steam powered chicken. Oh yes, <laughs> oh, yes. Which, which was, was, large, was invented, and Matt, the way Matt presented that in this completely, absolutely <laughs> non in a matter of well, you invented this amazing thing. It's a chicken, and it's made by steam, and it had its own backstory, and he's, he's, he had his own relationship with this this creature. And you weren't to upset it or annoy it because it, it would it would boil over and it would cook its own egg. <laughs> it's just, my next tattoo. I decided. I wouldn't get to this chicken. Yes, I'm just loving it. I just adore that. I adore this kind of writing, this kind of comedy. It's very, very much my. my it thing. was. It was um, very deliberate, though, honestly. When we went back to it, knowing that you'd said yes to doing it, that uh, we half the first series of studio ones is the old episodes re-edited and updated, and then three are new, and then. 
there were lines of dialogue. I remember going through thinking, that doesn't work anymore for Luke. It, we, I think we didn't want it to be... There's no point trying to replicate well, him. There's, there's, there's just no point. So it was kind of brilliant having worked with Andy a few times. Yeah. Um, we could then write it to him. And actually, Luke yeah. is a slightly different character now. He's mm. When he was Matt, he was very Matt. He was slightly brusque. He could be quite rude to the inspector if he wanted. <laughs> he calls you a tart at one point. <laughs> <laughs> which is what Matt used to call everybody. Um, <laughs> And then you sort of go back. Well, actually, it doesn't it doesn't work for Andy saying this thing? So actually, he's a, he's slightly different. And we gave him I don't know why, but he's now a sort of musical theatre. <laughs> <laughs> sure, when, when did that possibly I, don't know. Know. I think so it was kind of what is the most right. ludicrous thing for a, a, a really clever yeah. scientist who just happens to love musical theatre. Yeah. <laughs> so might be writing a, a, a musical. He's, about he's writing musical. Shoe shiners. Shoe shiners. But I, I have to say, you know kudos to Andy because actually uh, the character is entirely his own now and that's that's the best way of doing it it's yeah. not I say it's not the same the uh, Matt's version is there and you can go listen to it it's very different I think a very different Luke um, but yeah well kudos to Andy because I think yeah. he's been fantastic and it's like know. getting a gift <laughs> and then doing something with it and giving that gift back and it just yeah. kind of grows and develops yeah there are some parts yeah. that you just, just drew right into mm-hmm. Yeah, and now we and kind of, one of go yeah. on to new episodes, and it's kind of and that's it now. It's these four together, so it's yeah, it's, um, you've done a sterling job. No, well done, Lily. Really. And so, how have how the rest of you felt? Your own characters have tweaked or developed as they've gone on. As Constance gets more, <laughs> <and> more <laughs> outrageous, crazier every episode, just a little bit more mad. Can you can you kind of see a development from like those earlier first sketches, and then how they are now in in, in the script? It's, it's interesting how little that Laura tolerates shit as it goes on. Like, <laughs> like cool. it's just the, like it's almost like Inspector opens her mouth and so his mouth, and sometimes she just goes, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like I know what's happening now. I'm now fully in." But it's wonderful because it comes out of her affection for the Inspector. Yeah, the lovely thing is she's never mean to him. She's never no. sarcastic. She kind of allows him to be. A complete idiot. Yeah. Who never allows him to feel like an idiot. She's no. very defect- defensive of it. And it's become like the way she has an affection for him is mm. because he is who he is and she loves that as much as it surprises her every time, despite <laughs> the fact she knows <laughs> that it, <laughs> she knows it's gonna say something dumb, but it's never quite right what she's expecting. Uh, but there's also that very much settled status that they all feel with each other, yeah. which you almost got a little bit from the beginning that you felt like they were like, ah but just to feel that sort of grow and that also grows in your confidence with your character as well, because I think it is great to do it again because I think Certainly, definitely, my acting's got a lot better. So it's quite nice to do it again and be like, right, I think I've got it now. I think I've got Laura. Because at first I was like, oh! like it's, it was wonderful. It was such an honour. But I was like, do I deserve this? Do I deserve this? Do I deserve it? And then eventually I'm like, oh, I do. I love Laura. I deserve Laura. This is great. And, you know, you feel so comfortable with the people you're doing it with. And you feel so comfortable it helps you act with each other and for Laura to sort of grow. And also, she gets to be the clever one all the time, so people get to tell me I'm clever. <laughs> <laughs> Every episode, someone goes, you're the clever one, and I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, what you were saying there, it's, like a, it's, it's a true ensemble piece. Mm. Um, all of the characters, and, and as actors as well, just like seeing you and listening to you work together. It's very, very much an ensemble piece. Um, so as an ensemble, so we all know that actors can get up to a little jakes every now and then. But what are your sort of fond memories from those recording sessions or anything that, that you can remember or any theatrical anecdotes or tales that you can regale us with from those heady early days? Uh, early, that was only a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I did. It's, it's, it's the other beyond. It was before lockdown yeah. three, yeah. Every time you go to inspect a murder, it's just comforting. It's like if a script was soup. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, this is wonderful. And like, you just every time you go to it, you're like, oh, this is my safe space. <laughs> like, oh. This is wonderful. And like, it's also there's that playing with it because you feel really comfortable and confident. You can be more playful with it. And it's great because generally people go, no, that is not how you say it. And you're like, okay, cool, try it this way. But then every time you try something new and you play with each other, it's so 
good to have that. It's almost great to be wrong sometimes. And they're like, no, try it like this. And I'm like, oh, that's genius. But you can never tell Laura that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like sometimes I don't get half the jokes and I have to be told how to say something. For four years. <laughs> For four years. Do, you, do, you know, do you know what? We, that is one of the lovely quirks. You, you know there's going to be a certain delay with some things and it, it's just a joy when, when suddenly there's this Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you couldn't. It's priceless timing. But uh, it yeah. was also really nice at the end of uh, series one when what you were saying about kind of like feeling like the ensemble and feeling the safe space and all that kind of thing because Inspector kind of turned out to be sort of really looking out for everybody. And although he's like the bumbling idiot, mm. which is probably a much nicer way of saying it than Constance would. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm pretty sure she couldn't say anything nice about him at one point. <laughs> no, absolutely. But but at the end of that of that um series, he was the one that was sort of taking care of everybody in mm. actually quite an intelligent way. A, a way that nobody had credited him with throughout the series with anything like that intelligence. So it was it was just a nice sort of it was kind of like a really loving kind of it was a nice warm feeling that you had at the end of it, I think. Yeah. And it was very it was very because I was able to come in to those recording sessions as I think I played a couple of cameos and then also for the Christmas special which I adored. I, the scene that I was able to play with you always oh. Getting yeah, tears in my eyes. Um, but Steph, as well, you came on board for those recordings as well, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. So what was that like for you coming into this crazy family? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my first introduction, actually. I, I hadn't heard the characters or anything. I knew of them, um, but I hadn't listened or anything. So it was quite hard to, you know, be recording live and so you've got to be quiet and then suddenly you're hearing... Constance, <laughs> which is enough for anyone. To <laughs> and it was just so hard to 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 try and keep quiet, but it was just so lovely to to just be a part of it. You know, I just loved uh, the four the four um, main people in the team, and to just get to be a, a small part of it was just really lovely. Yeah, yeah. and then when you, when you pop in with your lines, and then you was like, everyone's got bouncing back. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why. I mean, it, it, it does work so well, as I said, you know, the writing team put it together so well and, and to create all the uh, the atmosphere of all the backstories coming out. Mm. But you have all these lovely rich moments with new characters coming in and everybody who kind of joins in and, and the kind of Inspector Murder family kind of keeps growing. It, it, it's, it, I think it's what kind of drives it forward. Yeah. You know, each episode is quite exciting to see what's going to come and what's going to happen as as you guys say. Um, so, yeah. I, I Even when you're talking about cameos, I mean, I, I came in, um, and I think for the Christmas special, I basically played a Dickensian messenger waif, you know, or <laughs> governor, you know, get on, gosh, should be in Oliver. Um, Awful dodger. Um, yeah, basically, the <laughs> dodger. And um, when we did the script that we're, we're going to be doing in a moment, you brought me back! Yeah. <laughs> you brought me back as my little cheeky, cheeky Jackie. I think Watkins pops up in, I think there's two or three episodes yeah. that he's in now. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's again, which, Baker which is Street great, it's, it's, it's lovely when you get a message or something. It's like, yeah, we've got a little scene for, for, mm. for Watkins mm. here. I have to say one thing is... Uh, when we were doing... We've been so lucky during the whole sort of lockdown sort of process to be able to do this kind of style of genre. And it's, and it's been so good for everyone coming together I think and just continuing it with the audio but fair play hats off to Stefan and the sound team as well because <laughs> as, as much as it looks incredible the amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes and poor poor Stefan you know when we are checking sound levels and we completely <laughs> forget that, that there's you know somebody at the head of an MI5 operations headquarters base there and and whenever we're yelling or shrieking or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you forget poor Stefan's probably, you know, had paid out fortune in, in like, you know, doctor's fees for their ears. But, um, well, when we do the sound levels, everyone tends to read my opening little bit and have what you say said by every single yeah, person yeah. in the cast like nine times. Not you're sure sort of like, <laughs> and then you have to say it and it's like, um, what? Words, <laughs> right? And we all have to say it at once at the same time, and it's yeah, very disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gareth, you were you were also in part of those recording sessions as, as well as, as, as editing and uh, editing the audio as well afterwards. And so, how any memories from you from sort of writing from writing it with Dario and then 
recording it and then listening to it, listening back to it as well. Yeah, I mean, it is a just brilliant experience when you get that first moment to listen back to it and go through the editing process because when you're live there and you're in the moment, it's really fun and it's great, but you somewhat lose the, the sense of it hanging together as a whole story. Mm. And when you're going back and editing, that's the first time when you sort of get that chance to hear it as a listener rather than hearing it as an actor. And that's always a, a great moment. Um, and th there's been some, some really fun things to edit. Like, um, I think episode three, where you've got um, Watlington comes oh. in and he's sort of swearing and there's these animals. Oh, the circus, yes, yeah. And, yeah, that, that was great fun to edit and go through and sort of uh, put together. And um, yeah, just the, the way it sort of, you take it from just pure audio and turn it into this finished thing with all the sound effects, all of the the music coming in and out. It just yeah, it's a brilliant thing to be the first person who hears the yeah the sort of full version of it, as it were. And somewhere you have a file of bloopers for blackmail purposes. Or... Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, do, you do also get to sort of hear. What's really interesting is the mic stays on probably <laughs> <laughs> Sli slightly longer. <laughs> Toilet break time. We're already yeah. acting, and you, you just get these bizarre conversations. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> Uh, well, it's nearly finished uh, being written, Blimey. so we're uh, on to episode six. So, what can I tell you? Episode two is, uh, we find out what happens when Luke invents a genuinely brilliant invention and uh, goes on his own little escapade. Hey. Uh, oh. Episode three is what happens when someone kidnaps Constance. Brave, <laughs> 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 yeah. brave. Uh, doesn't end well. Um, episode four is... Uh, more of a kind of a gang show. They go down. They go on holiday together, and Luke oh. gets to indulge in his uh, his passion for musical theatre at last. Oh, yes. So we finally get to hear that. Uh, episode five <laughs> is about the inspector going on the hunt for a blackmailer, oh. and episode six is top secret. Yeah, <laughs> there is there is a plot afoot, and obviously, an Adelaide is in the rest of the series, so we have a new yeah, main character. Yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome. <laughs> So, from everyone from all of the episodes that have been released so far, who's got a favourite story plot moment? Oh, oh, oh. I loved it when Constance was off her tits. I was just going to say, that was my first thing for being it's off just... my tits on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I also loved um, when um, Luke and Laura were stuck in a vault. In the with, vault. Oh, yeah. yes. with Luke's nipples, yes. Keith and Geraldine. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you're listening to the cool. new versions, that hasn't happened yet. It's from the old live shows, but it will pop up again, I'm sure, uh, okay. <laughs> so to speak. There's so many uh, sort of wonderful, clever in and endearing moments. Um, you know, with every character, I mean, the way it's written with all the backstories all piling in. And from a personal point of view, I mean, you know, you, you, you've, you've got Luke and his theatrical and his gadgets and, and there's the constant on going battling with Constance that is oh, constant battle yeah. <laughs> which, which, which is uh, God this is happening Grab really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is um, yeah it was just brilliant you know he's part nemesis and, and then obviously Laura endearingly keeps everyone on track and sane um, <laughs> but yeah with the inspector there was a couple of lovely little tweaks that I saw that um, that was written in like characteristics where he accidentally misinterprets uh, paintings for windows. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> which, which is a little That's favourite of mine. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and the fact that there's always like a cataclysmic fall normally that the inspector <laughs> goes under, or, or some accident oh, or an animal or yeah. attack, or in each episode. That was really nice. Um, but there's there's two, two, two things, if I might add to that, that's um, that are very specific. And there was a, and you touched on it earlier. Erica, there was, there was such a lovely, uh, heartfelt moment. Um, I'm very lucky that you guys wrote that in. That the, the inspector comes across this cute little girl, and you, you played her so so cutely uh, amongst your myriad of other <laughs> characters. And he gets mistaken for Father Christmas, <laughs> and I've got to say that was a really special moment and so nice. I think there was also a slight callback to it 
at another time, but obviously I, I, I can't talk too much about that because I think that probably hasn't come out. But no, it has. No, it was no, a, it was a yeah. Christmas special. Yeah, we released okay. it now. It's out. It's out. <laughs> <laughs> he comes um, back as and, and that was such a really special moment. Um, so, so all of them throughout, you know, with all the characters coming in, with the richness, with all the hilarities that each character brings. Um, but as as Constance says, as much as I don't really want to admit it or agree. Probably the one of the favourite episodes is is the number two with with the rollicking train oh, yes. hazard of and misadventure. Luke and losing his hearing and he's like, oh, yes. oh that was so good. I oh, don't think that's really the right time, yeah. but it's just the fact you'd yeah. be going along and I'd be like, okay, so I'll go this way and you go that way. Yeah. And because he hasn't heard me, he's like, okay, so you go this way and I'll go yeah. that way. And it's just like, okay, fine. <laughs> and then just the way it sort of went along, oh, that was just such a clever thing. And you're like, oh my God, I'd never be able to think of something yeah. like that. And the answer was always half past 11 or something. <laughs> it was, it was Quarter to so, 12 now, sir. That's it, brilliant. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, and, and, I mean, that one is an epic, you know, yes. and, and obviously the train and the, and the inspector go their separate ways, not in the best of <laughs> <laughs> terms. Um, Steph, Gareth, Bundy, any other ones? One of my favourite, um, I've not as much experience with it as you guys, but one of my favourite ones was the when they all went to the theatre and oh. the, um, the the, the theatre caught fire. And it, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Upon examination of the sort of backstory that every single theatre that has ever burnt down has a relative of Constance's. <laughs> he was the fire officer. And they went literally all, all the way back to the beginning of the 17th century. But sort of that, you know, that, the, the theatre, oh, oh, that was my uncle. He was... Yes. <laughs> yes. He just, just, every, everything Constance touches either, either gets killed <laughs> or destroyed in some way. She's oh, just yeah. most magnificent creation. She's a grand family. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's not a lots particular... of relatives. Lots of relatives. <laughs> Lots of those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a particular moment but one of the things you discover when you're writing I love about Constance is that she doesn't appear to know any of their names <laughs> <laughs> okay. she never still calls him science man and girly and yeah. or, or <laughs> manner of different things oh. <laughs> but I just love the fact that she doesn't really know who they are <laughs> that is brilliant, that um, is brilliant. Yeah. Steph or Gareth any memories or anything Ooh, um, I mean I, I hate to come in for episode 2 as well <laughs> <laughs> I think that yeah, the main character I blame that Freddie Ferris yes. is sort of oh. so so over the top <laughs> that you good. can really oh, sort yes. of lend yourself yes. into just this horrendously oblivious posh person who's drifting oh, yes, through life, wasting yeah, money all over the yeah. place, and just really push that character. So that was great fun to play. Really enjoyed that. I mean, I love playing all the characters I play in this. They're all sort of really really great to do. Mm. Gareth did a great reaction. He gets zapped in the ghoulies. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> the sound effects were very, very good. Oh, well, because I also did it on you when you were Wraith as yeah. well. Yes. With clients. <laughs> oh, I'm probably doing that next time. Yeah. I loved yeah. that bit. Stephen, <laughs> um, I think my favourite moments, a bit of a personal one, is um, in episode three, I think, is when Moddy... Yeah. was in um, and so it was just really nice that I got to have these little moments with the inspector like we had a really nice scene and I was like it's not a window it's an old painting <laughs> and then I got to um, have a little interaction with with uh, Laura so yeah entertaining in his rooms <laughs> um, and yeah just those little moments obviously I, I this is my favourite episode the one we just done because I get to join the team and join in the adventures. Mm. So I'm really excited. No, mm. welcome. That's good. And Gary, are any other moments or anything? Um, I don't, the favourite, I think, of all the ones we've done so far is the the, one that's, the ones that are out is the Christmas episode. Because yeah. I've always wanted to write a Christmas story. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're always doing panto. You never get to do anything that's Christmas mm. related that isn't panto. So it was really nice to do. And, um, and it's, it's nice because it's, I think it's got some of the funniest stuff. I mean, genuinely, like, to this day, I laugh. Uh, um, it's where you're pretending to be the inspector's <laughs> ballroom dancing partner <laughs> and Andy's voice yeah. cracks me up every time <laughs> yeah. and, um, and Constance gets to sing Silent Night which yeah. was glorious and oh, yes, has yes. a sort of tirade against the inspector which yeah. is, was so difficult to write <laughs> <laughs> trying, to fight, cause trying to top her swearing is really difficult yeah. every time yeah. um, and yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's quite sweet as well I think it's you know and, um, and Alistair the scene it is a scene when you go back to Fran, the little girl who thinks that you're Father Christmas, and he kind of gets to explain himself. It was something we didn't really do in the original live version, was a lot of character development. It was a big, fun story that then turns a little bit dark at the end. And it was just very sweet to give him a moment where he's not falling off something, <laughs> or being you know, a bit misguided or a bit blunt about things, running into danger without thinking about it. 
and he gets to sort of explain who he is and it's really sweet and Alistair did it perfectly and he get I think it's the line he he says I hope I'm a light in the dark and it's a really yeah. lovely way of how he, yeah. how, the, he for all his blundering and for all of his um, <laughs> bravado he you know he really cares mm. so yeah it's, that was a lovely there's some uh, if I say to myself too, there's some good ones from series two um, watch out for the hot air balloon <laughs> oh, oh, that's so oh, there you have it we've got to keep There's listening now and finding out what happens with the hot air balloon, hot air balloon. Um, so thank you very very much for joining us this evening um, as I say you can find out all the episodes of Inspector Murder on SoundCloud and look forward to series 2 coming do we have a, a, an ETA uh, it'll be the autumn yeah, we'll the record autumn. it in the summer it'll be out at some point that's what it will be so yeah we'll be, record, we'll be recording that at some point over the yeah, sometime summer yeah sometime soon and everything um, so if you would like any more information you can follow us at www.unboundtheatre it's a good job I don't speak for anything <laughs> unboundtheatre.co.uk you can also visit www.queensparkarts.com <laughs> brand, brand, new brand new website brand new everything website. is there um, they hope to be opening their doors May 17th May will be well yep. indeed uh, so you can see all the workshops and everything there do follow us and you can follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter um, and let us know what you think and get in touch. It would be lovely to, to hear from you all. Um, so thank you very much for watching. It is only now for me to say goodnight and thank you very much. I'm just going to go around from where I'm sitting, um, my point of view, from over here. So thank you very much to Alistair. Thank you. To Good night. Stephanie, Mr. Dario, Andy, Emily, <laughs> Joe. Good night. Gareth <laughs> and Erica. Bye bye. Bye.